I'm sitting in a chair with a box, and that means it is time to open up another Figura Obscura from Four Horsemen Studios. Huge thank you to them for continuing to include me in these reveals. Um, if you're watching this video, then you already know what it is, but I don't know what it is yet. I am just getting this in hand for the first time. As far as predictions go, I think it's going to be a female character. I don't know what it could be besides like, like for me, I'm thinking like Joan of Arc or you could do like Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. But yeah, that's my prediction. Let's crack this thing open and find out what it is. I have no clues. They have not, nobody has revealed anything to me. It's a pretty standard size box. So I don't think it's going to be some kind of big deluxe two pack like last year's. But whoo, here we go, baby. Let's take a look and see what we got. It's wrapped. Okay, all right, I should have opened the box. It's uh, Hi Bill, Enjoy from Chris, and it's got a nice skull on there. Thank you, Chris, that is amazing. I'm that guy, like I wanna try to save, save my wrapping paper here. So, let's see here. All right, here we go, everybody. You get first look, and it is, oh, this looks dark. The Mask of the Red Death, Edgar Allan Poe. Quick look at the packaging. I'll do turnarounds in the video. It's got a whole story on the back. Wow. They went for it. Full-on literary. And I know everything they do is literary in some ways, but to me this is more like the dark romantics of the 19th century. All right. Here we go. Let me see what this thing looks like. I was, I, you know, it's funny is because I said Little Red Riding Hood and I mean, you know, it's a red hooded figure. If you have not read The the Mask of the Red Death, it is effed up. It is a crazy story. And I was, I remember reading it like right when COVID hit. It's, it's like, it's a story about a disease. So yeah, check it out. I mean, it's got a grandfather clock in there, which is a key element. And it's got the skull with the mask and we'll get all into this in the video, but holy cow. I mean, it looks like the hands and the feet might be new. I, there might be some new parts on the body. It's hard to tell in the box, but I will crack this thing open and I will get this review going. So thank you very much Four Horsemen Studios. Peace. to another Dorkler action figure review. Today I have a very special first look at the Mask of the Red Death from Figura Obscura by Four Horsemen Studios. If you are watching this video on the date of publication, then this figure should still be available. There would have been a drop prior to this publication at 9 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, and a second drop forthcoming at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, September 23rd, 2023. So still a chance to get it if you missed that first drop or if that first drop sold out. There will be a limit of four per person of this figure. It's $60 a piece. It comes with some really cool stuff. We're going to get into all of that with the review. Um, then there's an option to get it as a bundle with a pin and a mug for $85. That version is one per person. If you're going to go for that, those often sell out pretty quickly. So if you want the bundle, make sure you jump on that pretty early. Furthermore, for all you diehard Poe fans, there are some Mask of the Red Death t-shirts available as well. Those are being sold through Retro Rags Limited. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in those. You can check that out as well. Packaging with rich illustrations by Nate Barch. And you have this really nice wraparound kind of a case with the flat finish in glossy lettering. An extremely well written summary of the short story on the back. And then on the other side is the clock. With the cover off, there's a window box and you can get a good look at the figure and the the grandfather clock, as well as some more artwork on the side and back, including a plague doctor carrying away all the dead bodies outside the chateau and a candelabra that's used to illuminate those stained glass windows on the other side. More beautiful artwork within the wraparound cover with the colored stained glass windows casting their lights and colors upon the revelers. 
You have Prince Prospero and six others representing the seven deadly sins from left to right. You have sloth, lust, envy, wrath, gluttony, greed, and pride. Even inside the box, the backdrop has the seventh and final window with the blood red crimson stained glass with a skull motif. It does come with a copy of Poe's short story, The Mask of the Red Death. It's sort of mini comic or pamphlet style. You have artwork, of course, by Nate, and then you've got credits to Eric for designing the character, Jeremy for the layouts, and then, of course, all of Four Horsemen Studios on there. And yeah, so you get the title there, and Nate's art that's on the box continues throughout. And this is really cool because if you haven't read the story, you got a copy of it right here with your figure. And so you can kind of flip through. Beautiful clock over here. I think every side and panel of the box is in here pretty much. And the last page has, let's see right here, has the character itself. And yeah, pretty cool stuff right there. And just so you can get a sense of the size, it is very close to mini comic size, like just slightly larger than a Masters of the Universe mini comic awesome touch really cool especially since the figura obscure line has really been all about a communal reading experience from the beginning whether it's jeremy's write-ups on the source horseman page or maybe it's the literature itself like in this case you have the short story this short story is actually really short as you can see it's only a couple pages long and you can kind of get through that really quick if you're not a huge reader i do highly recommend it it will It'll kind of frame everything for you in terms of what it's all about with this storyline. Of course, there's also the excellent summary on the back of the box, but really nice touch here with the mini comic slash pamphlet style short story included with the figure. Zooming in for a close up of the apparition's details, the first thing that stands out to me is all of these cloth goods. You have this wired hood over the top here that drapes down the back and has two flaps in the front. Then you have this other sort of robe across the top, almost like a toga or something like that. Nice details with the stitching that kind of circle around. And then down underneath, there's sort of this thin gown, which is another different material, or it could be the same material, just a single ply here, where this one has the multiple colors. This one has two sides. This is just one thin piece with some frayed ends, giving it kind of that spooky look, but also, you know, frayed fabric that could pull off a little bit if you're not careful. I do sometimes wish the wires were a little stiffer with Mythic Legions, just like one grade more stiffness would be good. Um, they're not bad, but they can kind of like lose their pose a little bit when you're bending them around. So like one, you know, just like a little bit more of a heavier gauge would be kind of nice. But yeah, so there's a wire that runs all the way down the back of this piece and then back up the other side. And then there's a wire that runs along the hood and then the flaps in the front. And mine actually stops right here. I think that might be a mistake because on this side, it comes all the way down. I'll, I may want to try to like shift it over a little bit. And then this piece also has wires. So, you know, the, um, the toga type piece has a wire throughout it. No wires on that under piece. And I will at some point fully pull this figure apart later in the video to give you a look at all the cloth goods and how that body looks underneath. And then a nice look at this skull with the red mask on the front. And that is a creepy mask. And if you wanna know what's underneath it, you're gonna have to wait till you get the figure in hand because I promised that I would not reveal. And like I said, I'll pull all of the cloth goods off later so you can see the full body underneath. And right here you have, I believe, the Poxus arms, and then you have some new hands, possibly the Poxus hands as well. They're the same sculpt on both sides, but on this side, it's got like the black coloring, and on this side, it fades into the red to sort of be like the touch of death over on, on this side here. And we got some brand new legs right here. I'm assuming the upper legs might be the upper legs from the Undead Builders pack in the Necronominous wave, but these lower legs, I don't remember ever seeing these. I think the feet might be from Poxus. Um, again, decayed, sort of zombie flesh looking type stuff going on there. And then there is the new loin piece. So this is the first time we're getting this in hand, but it's the same loin piece as Thoracis in the All-Star 6 and as the Cosmic Legions figure, the Thraxian Scout. And you can see that has a couple tones with some reds and some blacks to bring out that 
cloth-like look of it. And then it also comes with the clock right here. And it's cool. It's got a little raven on the top as a homage to Edgar Allan Poe himself. The front actually does come off. This whole like front piece comes off. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be glued. I thought, oh, maybe you can turn the hands, but those don't seem to be movable. So, I mean, it's just kind of a a little removable piece there. So not any real function to it, but that's what's going on with mine. And there's nothing to write home about on the back, but just look at all the crazy details. In fact, might as well just take this thing off so you can see inside there. Such fine detail. I mean, this is a actually a pretty major diorama piece. I mean, if you've ever wanted a 112 scale grandfather clock, this is just perfect. And this piece was packaged separately. So if you wanted to have something else on top, you might be able to find, you know, maybe a 3D printer to make you something interesting to put up there. But very, very cool stuff. And you've got the pendulum mechanism. It's a nice detailed like woodworking type accents on the side. And then down here, there's another nice sculpture of this face, this fawn looking or perhaps demon type character here. Maybe this is like a little teaser that, hey, this is like a future figure obscura type character. But yeah, and a nice little um, claw foot on the bottom. And then let me move this around a little bit. We've got the spilled blood down here. And that looks incredible as well. And this thing pegs in the four feet, just sort of peg into spots right there. But yeah, so this is this is like a this is a full on diorama piece right here with the grandfather clock that comes with the figure. Really, really nice. It's, that's just like included in that price. This thing is sick. At one point in the story, Prospero grabs a dagger and tries to confront the apparition. And presumably that's what this dagger is. And I thought this was the regular Legion's dagger but it's actually a little different. Now, I'm not sure if there's two daggers and I'm just not thinking straight right now, but this is definitely a little smaller. It feels like a little more in scale than this like bigger one, but pretty cool stuff that we've got these two different size daggers, though they're very similar right here. Um, this one is from the Barbarian, and then this is from the mask of the red death set in addition to the gesturing hands that the figure comes with it does have an extra set of gripping hands so you have a vertically hinged gripping set a pair of horizontally hinged gripping hands and i love all the details especially right here where you can see like blood on the fingertips on the fingernails and stuff and then there's a pair of like really gruesome looking clawing hands to get some cool action poses going on. And again, with those details, and these two have horizontal hinges. Here's a zoomed out look at the figure in a natural pose so you can get a sense of its overall silhouette. And it stands just a hair under seven inches tall. For comparison, starting off with the original two Figura Obscura figures, the Black Krampus on the left and the Headless Horseman on the right. A couple more Figura Obscura characters on the left is the Monkey King, on the right is Father Christmas. And here they are all together in one shot. We've got every Figura Obscura figure released so far. We've got six characters. It's really starting to feel like a line and we already have two more on the way. We have the Father Christmas variant and the Headless Horseman variant and we'll see if they do a Monkey King variant. I think think they probably will. But uh, yeah, so this is really starting to feel like its own action figure line. Here's a couple standard Mythic Legions figures, an elf and a knight. And you do really get a sense that this is a 1.0 body. This is actually 1.0. I may not have mentioned that earlier, but I will talk about that when we start pulling this thing apart and popping and swapping. I'll show you what's underneath there. And bringing in a couple horror figures from the Mezco 112 Collective. On the left is Freddy Krueger, a criminally underrated figure. If you like horror, just get this figure. It's insane. And on the right is Nosferatu. I think everybody agrees that that is one of the best all-time Mezco 112 Collective figures. And so that you can see how the Mask of the Red Death compares to some other very familiar comic book type lines, we have a Mafex figure on the left with the Superman from The Dark Knight Returns. And on the right, we have Casey Jones from the NECA Mirage Turtles line. Here's a couple figures in the more seven inch scale. On the left is the Super 7 Falsa Doom Serpent Form. And on the right is the C-3PO from the Samurai Movie Realization line. 
And finally, for the smaller, more true six inch figures, we have the Hasbro Black Series on the left and the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified on the right. And if you were wondering what lies beneath, here's your answer. We have the full on naked figure here, all plastic right here. There's no cloth left on the figure. I pulled all the cloth goods off and it does not disappoint. Like this is pretty much a brand new figure. I know some parts are gonna be coming in future waves, but like as far as right now in hand, top to bottom, I don't recognize any piece except for like the hip piece underneath, like the construction piece underneath there. Everything else is brand new. You have this ghoul body torso that's just the flesh is just decaying off of it. All the arms and the legs match up. It's just a fully realized figure here and even that like belt piece there i think that's brand new i don't recognize that as well i know the arms i believe and the upper legs and the skirt loin the loincloth piece I, I know those are on other figures but like man this is really cool to see just like a brand new 1.0 body top to bottom in hand just like that boom there you go guys Ugh, so freaking cool here so let's now get into the articulation which is actually some pretty cool improvements in certain places starting right at the top not only do you have the usual ball joint with a lot of range but if you look underneath there what is that that is a hinge so you can bring the head way down way up without the cloth it can kind of get gappy of course but there's just a ton of new range in the head on this figure and i know some of the other i think maybe some of the knights or something are, are going to be coming with a hinge neck as well so they have been making improvements to the articulation and some really good ones too i mean that arm can come up really high of course slimmer body is going to allow for more range in a lot of places and you have that hinge and swivel, very typical of a 1.0 Legion's figure at the arm. And then the second big improvement is at the elbow. The way they've cut it, they've made the range pretty much as good as you're going to get, even with double jointed elbows. So, I mean, that is awesome stuff right there. So they are definitely making improvements. You also have the usual twist above the arm. Of course, with a fully bare arm, you're not going to have the... Uh, forearm swivel, but I think I'll take that trade off to have some nice fully bare arms like this. It's very, very nice. And then you have a hinge and swivel at the hand. And just to confirm, we do have the standard ball joint at the waist. So you have the waist articulation here. You can crunch forward and back and can kind of go side to side and stuff. So this torso will be compatible with all of your typical 1.0 style Mythic Legions figures. And then the lower half of the body is pretty standard 1.0 Mythic Legions articulation, hinge and swivel at the legs. This skirt definitely gets in the way of things, but if you were to put these legs on another figure, it would totally have um, you know a different range of motion there. And then there is a twist at the top of the thigh. And then you do have a hinge at the knee that brings it to a little past 90 degrees and there's a twist below the knee. Again, like the arms, there's not going to be a boot cut because the leg is, you know, sculpted. I'll just give you like another quick look at the details on those legs. Pretty amazing stuff. And then um, hinge at the ankle, rocker at the ankle, and there's a twist as well. So it is mostly the same standard articulation, but those elbows just have so much more range. And then you, of course, have that hinge at the neck that just adds a lot of action to this figure. So very, very cool body. I mean, I guess I should probably do one more quick close-up just so everybody can get a look. It's got the shoulder pauldron ports there. And yeah, so nice close-up here of that figure. So, so, so cool. And of course, I could not let you go without just a couple pop and swaps, of course. And here is one that's not really about the colors per se. This is more about the build. I did my best to put together the same formula as the Undead Builder Pack. And um, most of the parts are right, except for the forearms and the head. I don't have a Hagnon type head that would look right here. I just have the clear Hagnon head. And then of course the forearms are different because those have a two-part forearm. Um, so I think the between the elbow and the gauntlet on the builder pack, it's a new piece to, to match up with these arms. 
And yeah, so this is pretty cool. I mean, I'm pretty excited for them. And I put it in this pose because I really wanted to show the posability of these elbows with just that crazy range on there. So two-handed um, sword wielding is just not a problem. One thing I did notice, however, is that the feet are on a different peg. So this peg is actually not the right size here. So I think on the Undead Builder Pack, they're using the usual ankle peg. That's like an armored ankle peg or maybe the cloth, you know, quote unquote cloth leathery ankle peg. And this one is just too small. And presumably they had to make it smaller so that it would fit into the thinner leg without, you know, expanding it too much. So if you're going to be doing feet swaps with this, with other 1.0 figures, you will have to do the dreaded thing where you have to pop the ankle joint out, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. But so, you know, it is what it is, but that's just one situation for this. All I did was add a little paper in there so that it would kind of stay together um, and not fall over and whatnot. But yeah, there you have it. A, an undead builder type build using the mask of the red death. Here we have another pop and swap utilizing just the belt and loincloth from the Mask of the Red Death figure. I put that on the Headless Horseman legs, top to bottom. Those are just straight up the Headless Horseman legs. And then I took a Barbarian body and used the Varg arm wraps and of course the Attila head sculpt there. And I think this looks pretty good. I do think it seems to like visually elongate the torso a little bit. But I, th I think this is pretty cool for almost like a monk type character. If they did these wraps in loincloth in like a different color, definitely some very, very cool options out there uh, for these pieces and for these parts on these 1.0 figures. So pretty happy with this look right here. And I wanted to see how it would look with the metal armor. So I used the torso and skirt piece from the Hellfire Goblin, which is nice and beat up and it kind of fits the theme here. And then again, I utilized that neck from Ilgar. And this is pretty good. Like, I think swapping these arms onto, a, you know, a one regular 1.0 torso, armored torso works pretty well. Putting the torso itself from the Mask of the Red Death figure onto a skirt piece from your typical 1.0 figures, it's kind of swimming in there. So it's not the best look. It's kind of just too thin to fit on there. But um, yeah, so the arms and legs, though, they mix and match really well with other 1.0 Mythic Legions parts. And one final swap utilizes the toga style cloth goods piece. And I think this is fantastic. It's a very versatile piece. It's kind of got that over the shoulder thing and there's a hole on the other side and you can you can mess around with it because of the wires and like pose it how you want and get it to be, you know, just kind of just right for whatever figure, whatever application or build you want to use for it. I think this is going to have a lot of versatility in that kind of asymmetrical way that is a little more dynamic, let's say, than just a straight up cape or skirt piece. So really cool piece right here. Again, I love the stitching and all that stuff. And this gladiator looks awesome. I think this would also look good on Romulus putting this uh, red, you know, crimson kind of red cloak on Romulus would look really cool too. And that'll do it for this review. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween season. This figure is spooky as hell. And thanks again to Four Horsemen Studios. Until next time, may the force be with you.